Canto 15, Circle 7, Round 3, The Violent Against Nature. Summary. Protected by the marvelous powers of the boiling rill, the poets walk along its banks across the burning plain. The wood of the suicides is behind them. The great cliff, at whose foot lies the eighth circle, is before them. They pass one of the roving bands of sodomites. One of the sinners stops Dante, and with great difficulty the poet recognizes him under his baked features as Sabernetto Latino. This is a reunion with a dearly loved man and writer, one who had considerably influenced Dante's own development, and Dante addresses him with great and sorrowful affection, paying him the highest tribute offered to any sinner in the Inferno. Brunetto prophesies Dante's sufferings at the hands of the Florentines, gives an account of the souls that move with him through the fire, and finally, under divine compulsion, races off across the plain. We go by one of the stone margins now, and the steam of the rivulet makes a shade above it, guarding the stream and banks from the flaming snow. As the Flemings in the lowland, between Bruges and Wissant, under constant threat of the sea, erect their great dikes to hold back the deluge, as the Paduans along the shores of the Brent build levees to protect their towns and castles, lest Charentana drown in the spring torrent, to the same plan, though not so wide nor high, did the engineer, whoever he may have been, design the margin we were crossing by. Already we were so far from the wood that even had I turned to look at it, I could not have made it out from where I stood. When a company of shades came into sight, walking beside the bank, they stared at us as men at evening, by the new moon's light, stare at one another when they pass by on a dark road, pointing their eyebrows toward us as an old tailor squints at his needle's eye. Stared at so closely by that ghostly crew, I was recognized by one who seized the hem of my skirt and said, Wonder of wonders, you? And I, when he stretched out his arm to me, searched his baked features closely till at last I traced his image from my memory, in spite of the burnt crust, and bending near to put my face closer to his, at last I answered, Sir Brunetto, are you here? Oh, my son, may it not displease you, he cried, if Brunetto Latino leave his company and turn and walk a little by your side. And I to him, with all my soul I ask it, or let us sit together, if it please him who is my guide and leads me through this pit. My son, he said, whoever of this train pauses a moment must lie a hundred years forbidden to brush off the burning rain. Therefore go on, I will walk at your hem and then rejoin my company, which goes mourning eternal loss in eternal flame. I did not dare descend to his own level, but kept my head inclined as one who walks in reverence, meditating good and evil. What brings you here before your own last day? What fortune or what destiny, he began, and who is he that leads you this dark way? Up there in the happy life I went astray in a valley, I replied, before I had reached the fullness of my years. Only yesterday at dawn I turned from it. This spirit showed himself to me as I was turning back and guides me home again along this road. And he, follow your star, for if... In all of the sweet life I saw one truth shine clearly. You cannot miss your glorious arrival. And had I lived to do what I meant to do, I would have cheered and seconded your work, observing heaven so well disposed toward you. But that ungrateful and malignant stock that came down from Fiasol of old and still smacks of the mountain and the rock for your good works will be your enemy. And there is cause. The sweet fig is not meant to bear its fruit beside the bitter sorb tree. Even the old adage calls them blind and envious, proud, and avaricious people. See that you root their customs from your mind. It is written in your stars and will come to pass that your honors shall make both sides hunger for you, but the goat shall never reach to crop that grass. Let the beast of Fiasol devour their get like sows, but never let them touch the plant if among their rankness any springs up yet in which is born again the holy seed of the Romans, who remained among their rabble when Florence made a new nest for their greed. Ah, uh, had I all my wish, I answered him, you would not yet be banished from the world in which you were a radiance among men, 
For that sweet image, gentle and paternal, you were to me in the world when hour by hour you taught me how man makes himself eternal, lives in my mind, and now strikes to my heart. And while I live, the gratitude I owe it will speak to men out of my life and art. What you have told me of my course I write by another text I save to show a lady who will judge these matters if I reach her height. This much I would have you know, so long, I say, as nothing in my conscience troubles me, I am prepared for fortune, come what may. Twice already in the eternal shade I have heard this prophecy, but let fortune turn her wheel as she please, and the countryman his spade. My guiding spirit paused at my last word, and turning right around, stood eye to eye to say to me, Well heeded is well heard. But I did not reply to him, going on with Sir Brunetto to ask him who was with him in the hot sands, the best born and best known. And he to me, Of some who share this walk, it is good to know. Of the rest, let us say nothing, for the time would be too short for so much talk. In brief, we all were clerks and men of worth, great men of letters, scholars of renown, all by the one same crime defiled on earth. Priscian moves there along the wearisome sad way, and Francesco da Corso, and also there, if you had any longing for such scum, you might have seen that one of the servants of servants sent from the Arno to the Bacchiglione, where he left his unnatural organ wrapped in cerements. I would say more, but... There across the sand a new smoke rises and new people come, and I must run to be with my own band. Remember my treasure, in which I live on. I ask no more. He turned then, and he seemed across that plain like one of those who run for the green cloth at Verona, and of those more like the one who wins than those who lose. He notes the violent against nature. Dante calls them sodomiti, the sodomites. At root, the moral descendants of the people of biblical Sodom, by which Dante meant homosexuals, though he would probably have classed as sodomy oral and anal sex between heterosexuals, his Puritanism classing all such sexuality as bestial. The connotations of the word bestial, when so used, have led to the more recent sense of sodomy as sexual union of a human being and an animal, though this is only one of the word's senses, the original reference to homosexual sodom remaining firm. In Canto 12, Pasiphae is mentioned as having begotten the Minotaur after coupling with a great bull, but she is not among the damned souls there, nor does she appear, appear here on the burning plain whose wretches include a number of known or suspected homosexuals, but none with a reputation as an animal lover. Pacifice seems, in fact, to be used as a sort of musical key to this passage on bestial behavior, but sodomy in the recent sense is not otherwise treated as later. In Cantos 32 and 33, cannibalism is not specifically mentioned, though the act of cannibalism rings through all the phrasing as an ambiguous suggestion. It is almost as if Dante thought these sins too grievous to discuss openly. Line 10, though not so wide nor high. Their width is never precisely specified, but we shall see when Dante walks along speaking to... Ser Brunetto, that their height is about that of a man. Lines 23 to 119. Ser Brunetto Latino, or Latini, born between 1210 and 1230, died 1294. A prominent Florentine Guelph who held, among many other posts, that of notary, whence the title Ser, sometimes Serre. He was not Dante's schoolmaster, as many have supposed. He was much too busy and important a man for that. Dante's use of the word master is to indicate spiritual indebtedness to Brunetto and his works. It is worth noting that Dante addresses him in Italian as voi instead of using the less respectful tu form. Farinata is the only other sinner so addressed in the Inferno. Brunetto's two principal books, both of which Dante admires, were prose. Livre du Tresor, the Book of the Treasure, and the poetic Tesoretta, the little treasure. Dante learned a number of his devices from the allegorical journey, which forms the Tesoretto. Dante's surprise at finding Brunetto here is worth puzzling about. So, too, is the fact that he did not ask Chaco about him. 
when he mentioned other prominent Florentines. One speculation is that Dante had not intended to place him in hell, and that he found reason to believe him guilty of this sin only years after Brunetto's death. The Inferno was written between 1310 and 1314 in all probability. This answer is not wholly satisfactory. Line 40, I will walk at your hem. See also line 10, Dante is standing on the dike at approximately the level of Brunetto's head, and he cannot descend because of the rain of fire and the burning sands. 61 to 67, that ungrateful and malignant stock. The ancient Etruscan city of Fiesole was situated on a hill about three miles north of the present site of Florence. According to legend, Fiesole had taken the side of Catiline in his war with Julius Caesar. Caesar destroyed the town and set up a new city called Florence on the Arno, peopling it with Romans and Fiesolans. The Romans were the aristocracy of the new city, but the Fiesolans were a majority. Dante ascribes the endless bloody conflicts of Florence largely to the internal strife between these two strains. His scorn of Fiasolans is obvious in this passage. Dante proudly proclaimed his descent from the Roman strain. 66. Sorb tree, a species of tart apple. 67. Calls them blind. The source of this proverbial expression, blind as a Florentine, can no longer be traced with any assurance, though many incidents from Florentine history suggest possible sources. 71. Shall make both sides hunger for you. Brunetto can scarcely mean that both sides will hunger to welcome the support of a man of Dante's distinction, rather that both sides will hunger to destroy him. 73. The Beasts of Fiasol. The Fiasolans themselves. 89. To show a lady. Beatrice. 94 to 99. Twice already, I have heard. The prophecies of Chaco and of Farinata are the other two places at which Dante's exile and suffering are foretold. Dante replies that come what may, he will remain true to his purpose through all affliction. And Virgil turns to look proudly at his pupil, uttering a proverb. Bene ascolta chi la nota. Well heeded is well heard. 109. Christian, Latin grammarian and poet of the first half of the 6th century. Line 110. Francesco de Quarso, a Florentine scholar. He served as a professor at Bologna and